just getting set up. It usually works, but I can see you. And the comments if you have any. Alright, there we are. Hello, Annie. Um, I think I have a little bit of a delay, so forgive me if I sound like I'm very late in saying hi. But feel free to introduce yourselves. I'm going to adjust myself slightly. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell this is my first time going live on YouTube? Here we go. Um, and full disclosure, I just had a baby like two weeks ago, so everything's a little bit crazy at my house right now, hoping that she stays quiet for us, for our drawing. Oh, thank you. Oh, jeez, I just broke this. Try not to do that. Okay. I promise I won't touch that again. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited, just like not getting any sleep. <laughs> And, you know, enjoying getting to know her a little bit. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna write this down because this is one more time. And then I promise I'll stop. Okay. Alright, yeah, this is probably the earliest I've been up and productive for a little a little while. Sorry, I just really want this to be straight. Hey, Margaret from Texas. Oh, congratulations, Annie. That's so sweet. Um, yeah, I'm located in the Bay Area, California, East Bay. Um, so, oh, wow, Dean, hello from London. Awesome. Great. Oh, God, I'm so glad you guys actually are here because we had a lot of like technical difficulties getting the our live stream together and Germany hello wow awesome welcome everybody um yeah so have you guys um <clears throat> are you guys all signed up for the my class on uh on sketching or is this kind of a checking it out <clears throat> kind of a thing um just curious if anybody's tried any of the lessons yet. I really look forward to um, seeing everybody's work. Um, so I'm teaching a class called Figures and Charcoal. Oh, there we are. Hello, Sketchy. <laughs> um, yes, I'm teaching a class called Figures and Charcoal. Um, it's a four lesson series. Um, the first two lessons have dropped so far. And um, I am, um, I'll probably make this introduction a couple times, but I'm a classical artist and art instructor from Bay Area, California, and um, I've done many years of atelier training and lots and lots of drawing from life in the studio, <clears throat> so I've kind of distilled my charcoal and chalk method down into uh, four bite-sized pieces that I hope will help everybody to um, improve their figure drawing. So yeah, there's a link in the uh, 
in the chat from Sketchy for the class. Yeah, charcoal is, um, it's just like such a wonderful media. It's like so sensitive, so beautiful. Um, you can get so expressive with it or really refined. It just has such a good range. The method that I'm gonna be going over is um, a little bit more um, classical, a little bit more refined, but there's just so many directions that you can go with it. Oh, hello from New Jersey. Cool. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry for the light in here. It's a little bit dark still in California. We're also getting a little bit of like haze from the fires in the air, so I'm trying to compensate with other lamps. <clears throat> hey, Timothy. Um, so, Annie, I work in um, oil paint. I do a lot of graphite. Um, charcoal is like my favorite media for um, working from the figure, especially in the studio um, or in my sketchbook. Um, I also do a lot of digital um, drawing and painting because I'm working, do some work as like a concept artist, visual development art, background art for animation. Um, so yeah, I'm like all over the place. <laughs> do a lot of, uh, a lot of different things. Like a lot of artists are like that, I think. Just kind of whatever soaks your curiosity, you follow and get good at it if you enjoy it. What kind of uh, media do you guys like to work in? Does anybody want to share the kind of art that they like to do? Oh, I didn't realize that sketchy started in Miami. That's fun. Let's see. I'm going to try to get my YouTube set up in a way that I can actually see your chats while I'm drawing. Oh yeah, see Annie, you're a, uh, you're very similar to me, just all the things. <laughs> oh yeah, I also do like fa fabric art, like textile, painted textiles, hand painted textiles, and also like design fabric prints. Um, hello Maxine from New York. And San Diego, somebody who loves rats, I love rats. Oh, and Angie from Wales, wow. Linda from Adirondacks, hi. Hey guys. Uh, nice to see you all here. I'm so glad that everybody found the stream. I know we had some uh, technical difficulties getting me set up. I think my brain just isn't really working after the new baby. So, um, but we're here, we made it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a fresh page, fresh page of my sketchbook, and um, I might get started with doing some drawing, because it is after 9 o'clock, my time, noon Eastern time. Um, but yeah, feel free to, um, oh, I see you've been doing pencil and charcoal, heck yes, yeah, my, some of my favorite media. Yeah, I, um, definitely difficulty finding this. I'm so sorry about this. We like troubleshot for <laughs> so long yesterday and um, I just couldn't get my whole setup to work right so we had to change the link at the last minute. Super not ideal, I know. Um, but I'm glad that you found it and that we're here. Um, okay, so Jean, going ahead and your personal project full sketchbook. Oh yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope that um, you'll check out my charcoal class because it's all about just like drawing the figure in charcoal. And um, I think that that might really help you with that. I Figure drawing is my number one. It's like portrait and figure has always been my um, like number one love. I just love doing it so much. So um, happy to help. Um, oh, yeah, Jordan, I go by Tess. <clears throat> Tess Burry is too formal, but it looks nice, so I always use it in all my written materials. <laughs> um, I already signed up. Awesome. Great. Oh, and thank you. Thanks for the congratulations. Yeah, we're super happy. Um, okay, Rayanne. Awesome. Yeah, Winnipeg. Wow. 
got people from all over the place. This is great. Yeah, if you've come to the right place. So, um, I am, I'll tell you a little bit about my materials first. Um, so, oh, great, Marie. Similar, very similar. Okay, so what I'm using is, um, these are vine charcoal. Um, you can buy these in packs of three or um, 12, the art supply store. Um, not willow, willow's a little bit too soft for what we're doing, this is vine. Um, and then vine itself comes in several different um, hardnesses. So we have soft, medium, and hard in vine charcoal. So I'm gonna be starting my, by sketching with my soft vine charcoal. And um, you can see that I have sharpened this to a very fine point. Um, this is a typical like atelier classical drawing um, tool. Um, and in my, uh, if you take sign up for my class, I have like a materials video where I show you how to sharpen your charcoal and everything, um, go through this whole process. Um, I think it's really important to use sharp tools. Um, so I do keep them this and you'll see me like switching as soon as it starts to get dull, switch to another one. Um, other tools I'm going to be using, I've got, um, hopefully we'll get to it. Um, I've already eaten five minutes just talking, but um, if we get to chalk, I use these. Um, I usually just use the Generals brand um, chalk pencils. These ones have an eraser. They don't always have an eraser on them. <laughs> I don't need that. Um, but again, I shave it down with an X-Acto knife and then um, sharpen it on a sanding block to get a really nice, well, this point isn't that fine, but good enough. Um, so I just use to sharpen, I use a block of wood that I have spray adhesive, um, sprayed with spray adhesive, and then stuck a piece of sandpaper, kind of a fine sandpaper onto it. So that's how I sharpen these guys down. Um, I'm also going to use um, stumps, drawing stumps. Um, you can see these are well loved. I have one side that I reserve for my chalk and one that I use for the charcoal. I should probably invest in some new ones. And then my final tool that I really like to use a lot is a bristle brush, bristle fan brush. Um, and uh, this is really good for like kind of erasing and um, correcting and flattening value. I also taped a little bit of chamois to the end of it that I use kind of as an eraser. You'll see how that goes. Um, and then if I need it for racing, I have an actual whole chamois. Um, hi, Sheila from New England. Welcome. Um, okay, so I'm going to get started. So I chose this um, reference image because I'm hoping that with the kind of amount of information that's there, I can actually get a decent amount of it down on my paper in this time, um, short period of time that we have to draw together. <clears throat> um, I really like the clear kind of definition between um, the light and the shadow. Um, I focus a lot on shapes when I'm drawing. It's all about shapes. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started. So when I'm starting a drawing, um, I always start with what we call construction lines. So construction lines are kind of imaginary lines that we're making through the figure um, that represent like anatomical points or kind of gestural marks. So this one, as you may guess, I'm going for the angle of her, this model's shoulders. Um, and we can't see a lot of her actual form. Oh, she lives, I just use General's white charcoal brand. And yeah, Carrie, welcome, like totally fine. Just We're just drawing today and then hopefully you'll like it, sign up for the class and that'll give you way more information on uh, how to actually get started. Um, so again, going for a construction line through the shoulders. Um, now on this model, we can't see a lot of detail. So I'm not gonna be able to actually like draw a lot of anatomical um, forms on her. I'm just gonna focus mostly on the shapes that I see. And when I'm looking at like her torso form, I'm really seeing this beautiful sort of triangular light shape. So I'm gonna go for that to start. Um, when I'm drawing shapes on a figure drawing, I'm always going for larger shapes to smaller shapes. So we're starting with like larger forms and then working towards um, smaller forms. Really always general to specific. 
So then I'm going to do kind of the same thing to try to kind of block in a very simple shape for her face. Again, we're not seeing a lot of anatomical information, so I'm really, really just focusing on the shape. Sometimes you really need to kind of almost like turn your brain off and just look for the shapes um, because the shapes don't always match sort of the like platonic ideal of shapes that you see, that you, you think you see, like this doesn't look like the shape of a face necessarily. <clears throat> Um, but it's what we kind of, what we actually see there. We have to look past what we think we see and actually like draw what, the shapes that we're actually seeing there. So I'm just drawing really, really basic shapes here to get us started. We have like a little bit, looking at this distance, just seeing a little bit of these legs down here. Just kind of indicate those. Um, the color of my paper is, it's kind of a, yeah, it's really hard to see. Um, it's like a neutral middle kind of, kind of a tone. Um, I, us I usually draw on a, basically a middle tone. It can be like bluish, it can be kind of brownish, um, but I try to stick to that sort of middle, middle area. Okay, so let's see. Let's get an angle, just kind of, kind of the angle of that hair there and see how that connects with the shoulder, I think this is a little high. Again, I'm gonna use my chamois eraser to kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, this hand, I'm probably going to ignore that for now. Um, sometimes when you're drawing, you have to make some choices. Um, the extra hand in there might look a little bit more awkward in a drawing than it does in a photograph. Like when we're looking at a photograph, we kind of just accept the information that we see. Whereas when we're looking at a drawing, we kind of tend to scrutinize, what is that and why is that there? Um, so I'm probably gonna edit that out for the moment. Um, all right, uh, no, the paper's not white. The paper is like a middle, kind of a middle gray tone. Um, I like to use the middle gray tone because it allows us to use um, chalk. If we used a white paper, we wouldn't be able to use any, um, like mass in any light um, value using a white chalk. Um, okay, so we have kind of a simple, really simple basis going here. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of get in there and add a little bit of detail to flesh that out. I'm like kind of comparing my sizes of these really simple masses that I've put in here. Do they look like they relate to each other fairly well? Um, again, we don't have like a ton of time here, so I can't spend like as much time as I might usually making sure everything's kind of perfect. Um, but once I feel like these three masses are relating to each other pretty well, then I'm gonna get in there and start to refine um, my shapes. Um, so again, working general to specific. So we've got these really general blocks of um, kind of like, I'm just drawing around the light masses. And now I'm gonna get in here and refine them a little bit. You can see I'm holding my charcoal way like choked back up you know, on the very end of it. Um, you wanna keep a pretty light touch with your charcoal. You don't wanna be like doing a pencil hold. You don't wanna be grinding it into the paper at all. Um, keeping it pretty, pretty light at this stage. We wanna be able to like remove anything that we're putting down because it is so early in the drawing. Um, size of my paper, I think this is just I don't remember. Um, it's I'm working in a sketchbook, so it's um, like a little bit larger than eight and a half by eleven, um, but um, yeah, not not very large really. Um, okay, so uh, again, this is in a portrait class, so we can't spend too much time on the actual like portrait drawing techniques, um, but I'm going to be massing in what I'm going to focus on. Rather than getting in here and drawing individual features, um, I'm focusing on the little shadow shapes that we see. Do you see all these beautiful little shadow shapes that are created by the, the light hitting her face? Um, that's what I'm going to be focusing on in order to try to get this portrait kind of locked in. Um, I'm just drawing light and shadow shapes. So I'm going to go for that shadow 
that is cast under her nose because that's a pretty prominent one. See that just as kind of a triangular shape. Then I see this shape that's being created by her brow, orbital cavity, like the eye socket basically. Um, ignoring like little details, I'm just going for this large shape to start. Um, I'll just kind of get that going in there. Um, I'll go for the shape of the hairline. And because her head is tilted back, this information is kind of compressed, right? Um, the We can't go by like canonical portrait um, sort of uh, relationships where, you know, usually we can kind of divide um, oops, I bumped that. Um, usually we can kind of divide uh, the face into um, parts that are like fairly consistent throughout, you know, whatever model we're looking at. Um, you can't really do that when your model's tilting their head back like this. You really just have to look for the shapes and try to get them accurate. Now that I've got some um, portrait info, I see that I need to pull her, this shadow that's being created by her cheek way up because I'm looking at like this distance on mine was way too big. So I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller, pull that up, and then I'm going to use my chamois to erase. See how easy it is to erase if you keep your marks really light. And again, we don't have a ton of time for this, so I'm going to be speeding through it a little bit um, in order to get some value, like some, some actual charcoal value onto this um, drawing because we really want to get that impact of that really nice dark background. Okay, so we've got a little bit of an indication of her face there. Um, and then we come down to her hand. I'm going to go for like first this shadow shape that her hand, her arm is casting onto um, her torso and her upper, like her chest area there. Again, really looking at shapes. It, it becomes quite kind of abstract when you're working in this way. Um, and I really enjoy that aspect of it. It's kind of like fitting a puzzle together. Um, <clears throat> so we're, we're really just drawing what, what we see, you know, we're, we're not kind of bringing any kind of conventions of, you know, here's what you know, anatomically an arm looks like, here's what a face looks like. We're really looking at the shapes that we see and trying to capture those as accurately as possible. Um, okay, so we'll just give like a very sort of blocky indication of this hand. You can see in areas where like we know that there's a difference here between the, um, the wrist and the shoulder. But because I'm drawing in black and white, and I see that value-wise, like if I transfer changed this photograph into a black and white photo, there would be really no value difference. You guys know value is just like the level of shading, how dark or light something is. So there would really be no difference across here um, between how dark the wrist is versus how dark the shoulder is. So because of that, I'm just not going to draw a line to represent the edge of the wrist. I'm really, really looking at shapes. I'm kind of dogmatic about this. Um, so I can ignore, um, you know, exterior sort of uh, angles if I don't find them to be, to be relevant, um, if I don't really need them, if that makes sense. And you guys feel free to ask questions. I know I'm moving really fast here, um, just in the interest of like getting something down on the paper. There's going to be a lot of char charcoal on this drawing, so, um, and you'll see adding charcoal takes a good amount of time, so we want to like make sure that we have enough time um, to get something down. But we're getting there, so you see this looks like a really abstract shape <laughs> right now. So I'm going to go for um, this sort of negative space that's created by her hand to kind of indicate a little bit better that that is a hand. Okay. 
and you can see I'm switching out my I am switching out my chalk or my charcoal pretty regularly to keep the keep the tip pretty fresh. Um, I usually will buy these charcoals in packs <clears throat> of 12 and just sharpen a ton of them all at once just so I have them. Um, it's just kind of a practical consideration if you if you are working in this method. All right, so the hands, you know, I don't want to get too much in the weeds of like little fingery details, but I'm just kind of drawing around those light shapes a little bit. Get those in there. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at the face again, and I feel like I know I said that this is all compressed. I think I actually stretched these details out a little bit too much. Um, but it'll also become a little bit more obvious once I get some charcoal actual value onto this drawing because we'll be able to tell really fast whether it actually looks like this model or not. So um, let's throw some value in here. So this is a really dramatic um, reference image. Um, there's just so much charcoal, um, or there will be so much charcoal on it. So when I'm actually going to add this like dark ambient kind of background, I'm going to use um, one of my stumpier older charcoals. Um, so we don't have to waste our nice sharpened charcoal. I'm just going to start blocking, blocking this in. And while I do, I'll look at see if there's any questions. Okay, so eraser wise, what I'm using, what I've been using so far in the very early stages of the drawing, I like to use, um, I've taken a little bit of a chamois and wrapped it around the end of my brush so that I can use that as an eraser. So chamois, just like a, um, you can buy these at the art store, you can buy them at the auto supply store. It's just like a really soft piece of leather that erases really nicely. Later on, I'll be using my um, trusty kneaded eraser. Um, these are dime a dozen at the art store, so hopefully everybody has access to one of those. Um, the reason that I start with the chamois and work towards the kneaded eraser is because um, in the early stages of the drawing, you want to be really gentle on your paper um, so that you don't damage it. Um, if you use the kneaded eraser too early, um, if you use like a, a harsher kind of eraser too early in the drawing process, um, what happens is you can uh, score your paper, you can burnish areas of your paper, and then later in your drawing when you really want to come in and get some like nice detail going, um, you might not be able to because you might have um, kind of ruined your paper a little bit. So I'm like really careful about um, keeping my paper pretty nice and uh, especially in those early stages, um, not messing it up too much kind of as a gift to myself in the later stages of the drawing. So you can see I'm really just filling in all of this charcoal detail and um, I will be able to get in there and erase out a little bit if I over stepped. Um, I'm still applying it fairly soft, not going too hard. And looks really messy right now, but what we're gonna do next is come in with our stump. Um, and the way that I like to use these is um, not to grind into the paper, but really we're just trying to flatten our value. So we're gonna use the side of the stump and I usually go in a sort of round motion. Um, we're basically just trying to create a nice, even, flat tone right now. So just, this is a very like meditative part of the process. <laughs> it takes a long time to build up value in charcoal if we're approaching it in this way, um, but it's really satisfying once you start to get it going. You'll see that the stump does remove some of the value. Um, so you're, we're gonna be working kind of in 
building up layers of value, really, um, because it does erase a little bit um, as it flattens. And what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm working in the big areas with this big stump, and then I'm going to bring out a smaller stump to um, get into the detail, like in the faces and stuff, because this is just too clunky to um, hit that area. I don't want to totally obliterate all the work that I've done. I do kind of blow in it a lot to clean it up a little bit. Um, this one is okay. So let's use a little smaller stump to get into the details so I don't totally lose my little drawing there. And I actually need to get back in there with a sharper charcoal to um, get some of these smaller details. I actually haven't even put in the charcoal yet. I think I'm just going to focus mostly on um, this area because just in the interest of time, I would like to develop um, at least one area for you guys. Um, to, oops, geez, I keep bumping this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'd like to develop at least one area to pretty close to completion so you can see the whole process in action. So I'm going to get in here and fill in like this little nose shadow. <clears throat> Trying to fill in that mouth shadow, fill in this shadow on the hand, make them a little bit nicer. And you can see when I'm filling in value with a sharper charcoal, I'm pretty careful I'm not scrubbing back and forth too much. I'm really just kind of working in one direction, working pretty deliberately. Another trick for um, flattening the value is you can come in with the bristle brush and just with a really soft touch, just kind of glaze over it with the bristle brush. And again, we're just trying to create a nice, even, soft tone um, for all of this charcoal. Because why we're doing that is we are trying to create um, kind of an am like an atmospheric appearance to the to the charcoal. Um, we really want to do all of our rendering, all of our form building in the lights. So we're just trying to create like a nice, kind of clean appearance to our charcoal so that it doesn't distract from what we have going on in the lights. Um, charcoal paper, you know, I'm not actually a huge fan of charcoal paper. Um, it tends to have a lot of texture to it, um, and I really like working on a smooth surface, um, especially for this kind of detailed work. Um, you know, the charcoal paper tends to have this like really waffly surface. And um, I find that I just spend so much time kind of fighting that when I'm um, drawing. I prefer to start with a, um, this is a really smooth um, sketchbook. And I tend to work on like, like Canson paper or um, Strathmore has a really nice like toned drawing paper. Um, and I just, like the smoother surface. Um, this, um, let me see, I know I have written down what actually um, sketchbook I'm working on. <laughs> um, I can actually tell you guys what I'm doing here. Um, it's a Stillman, oh wait, here's my well, I'll get to that in a little while. I'll let you guys know exactly what. Um, and if you if you look at the, um, I think in the class description, we also have um, the actual sketchbook that I'm using. I think it's called Stillman. Whoops, my head. Um, I think it's called Stillman and Barnes. Um, and it's like a Nova, Nova series. Um, but I'll, I'll get that information to you guys in a second. Let's get a little bit more of this drawing going. Um, and I'm, so now I'm going to get in here. Oh, there you go. So I'm going to burn. Thank you. Yeah. And this is the Nova series, which is the toned um, paper. Um, I'm going to get in here with my kneaded eraser and sort of pick out some of these details, um, like the nose. Again, really just looking at the light shapes. Really just looking at the light 
the interaction of light and shadow in here, going for shapes still. Um, fixative, yes, for sure. Definitely, as soon as I finish a drawing, I use fixative. I like to use um, Sennelier is my favorite brand because they make a fixative <clears throat> that is for chalk or for uh, pastel. And I find that that is the best one to use if you are using white chalk on your um, drawing, which I always do. Um, the uh, Sennelier brand fixative is the most kind of delicate. Um, it has a really nice, like, delicate aerosol, and it'll actually, um, sometimes if you use, like, a, just a charcoal fixative on um, your chalk drawing, because, you know, your chalk is actually closer to a pastel. Um, I think it actually is pastel, really. They just call it chalk. Um, but it'll just, like, totally obliterate it if you use, like, a regular charcoal fixative, so um, I've definitely made that mistake on drawings before, so highly recommend um, if you're using chalk on your drawing to go for a uh, pastel fixative. And I just personally like the Sennelier brand. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm getting in here with my kneaded eraser, so this is clear, and just kind of cleaning up these details. I'm really trying to look at the shapes that are created by this these little shadow shapes, just beautiful, clear shadow shapes. I'm really, really into shapes. I guess you guys are probably getting that idea at this point. <laughs> um, it's all about the shapes for me. And, um, you know, I, I described this in the first lesson of the, of the class. Um, you know, I see spending this time kind of blocking things in, keeping things really simple. It's like building a foundation for a house. You wanna build a really solid foundation. You don't wanna jump into detail too quickly. It's like putting, you know, shingles um, on a roof that doesn't exist yet. You know, you're probably gonna to need to correct things. You guys can see I'm making lots of little corrections to my drawing all the time. Um, so I don't wanna to commit to any details too early in the drawing, I'm really looking at big shapes and working my way down to smaller shapes. So I'm really looking at the kind of curve of that chin. Probably gonna remove a little bit of, you see her hair, hair kind of peeking through there underneath the chin. That's kind of a nice detail. Um, and I'm just using my sharper charcoal to get some of those darks in there. I'm going to come up and what I'm looking at is, you know, always judging sizes of shapes. Like I'm looking at the distance between her brows and um, I'm going to widen that up a little bit. It's definitely not the most accurate drawing I've ever done, but we're going fast here. So we're just getting it done. Oops, I'm sorry, getting my head in there. Um, try not to do that. Let's get her brow going. Switch to a sharper charcoal. get a shape of the brow in there. Kind of my like drawing philosophy, this is just something that I've developed over many years of figure drawing from life in the studio. I'm always trying to kind of see like what's the least amount of information that I can put down and have it still like create a likeness, still look like the model, still look like something. Um, and that really like technique lends itself well to charcoal because, um, you know, charcoal, you can't get really detailed, um, for sure. And like, I'll save the detail for areas that really need it, but that kind of minimalism allows you to, um, really control what's called your focal point. 
Um, so you can really choose what area you want the viewer of your artwork to focus on when they look at your drawing. And that's like a really kind of a powerful tool to have as an artist. Um, you want to be conscious of, you know, what do you want people to look at when they look at this drawing? This photograph is a good example of really controlling focal point just because the photographer has really chosen, you know, I've got this light area, your eye is just going to go directly there because that's really all that you can see. Um, that's like just a really extreme version of that kind of controlling of the focal point. Um, and you can do the same in drawing, you know, um, even if your reference image doesn't, um, isn't as clear as this one, you can still control your focal point by where you're putting the most information, where you're putting the most contrast. And we do, we get into that a lot, especially in lessons um, three and four in my class. Actually, you guys are getting a taste of how loud my neighborhood is. <laughs> Sort of like really loud cars driving around right now. Um, okay, so I'm really just getting in there and getting kind of nitpicky with how I'm cleaning up these shapes, trying to get a little bit better likeness, although again, in the interest of time, we don't have too much time to focus on that. I'm going to get, try to get her hand in there a little bit better. And um, we'll find this shadow shape because I'd like to start getting some chalk in here pretty soon to show you guys how that works. But you can see some of these areas of charcoal that I'm putting in need to be flattened because they're getting a little messy. Um, but let's refine, let's refine her silhouette a little bit. Um, so the silhouette is just the kind of outside edge of the figure. Um, so I'm looking at this little form of her clavicle here, a little bit more anatomical detail that I left out, so I'm just refining what we see. Again, I'm just ignoring that extra hand for now because uh, it's just adding a level of complication that I don't really have time to deal with right now. Um, just flattening this out a little bit. Okay. And I'm, I'm kind of darkening the background around her as I'm doing this. So let's get a little bit of that in there, and then I'm going to go into chalk really quick. One thing I talk about a lot in the class is um, edges. So we're using um, uh, we're going to be using the definition of edges, shadow edges, silhouette edges, um, to tell the viewer what, what it is that they're looking at. So like the edge of the silhouette tends to be a little bit harder. You know, the silhouette would be like <clears throat> this shoulder silhouetted against the background will look a little bit harder than like this edge, which is a nice shadow edge. Um, so we look a lot at, at that kind of creating contrast and giving your viewer kind of cues to see what they're looking at, depending on how you're treating the edges, like pretty, um, pretty sophisticated, like drawing technique stuff and trying to kind of break it down in a way that's really easy to understand. Um, this is very, like, very classical stuff, but it's really fun um, once you get the hang of it. Um, do I use, oh, uh, no, so for sharpening the charcoal, <clears throat> we use a, <clears throat> excuse me, a sanding block. So that's just, um, a piece of wood that you can affix a, um, piece of sandpaper to, and, um, that allows you to, um, sharpen your charcoal to these really, really fine points. Yeah, you definitely don't want to stick these guys into a sharp pencil sharpener. I think you'll break a lot of them. Um, okay, so now that we have kind of a nice basic, like, silhouette version of this drawing going in, um, let's add some chalk. Let's see what that looks like. Alright, so I've got my 
General's pastel chalk pencil, and I've sharpened it up kind of quickly. <laughs> it doesn't look that great, but um, I do like to have a nice like surface area. It just makes it easier to resharpen. Um, and what I'm looking for now is kind of what are the lightest lights on the model. Um, we've got these beautiful light shapes throughout her face. And, you know, this reference image is really exaggerated. The, um, the lights are kind of all really bright. <clears throat> There's not too much um, variety in the lightness. Um, I kind of chose that on purpose just because we have so little time um, to draw. So I wanted to choose something that was a little bit on the simpler side. So I'm going to start blocking in um, some light shapes. So I'm going to start on her shoulder. And I know this can be a little bit harder to see, but once I get some of these in there, I will hold this up so it's a little bit clearer. Um, when I'm working with the chalk, similarly to when I'm working with the charcoal, I am um, kind of, I'm not, I'm not scrubbing back and forth. You know, I'm, I'm working pretty delicately. I'm trying to kind of apply the chalk all going in one direction. So we're keeping it pretty clean. You can use the stump on the chalk. You can use the eraser. So don't feel like if you put something down, like you're, you're married to it, you know, you can, you can draw with the chalk just like you do with the charcoal. Um, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is you don't want to, um, you don't really want the chalk and the charcoal to interact with each other, um, which becomes really a little dicey in these like small spaces, like in the face. Um, that's why you wanna keep your chalk really sharp. Um, if the chalk and the charcoal mix together, they just create this kind of like cloudy, kind of smoky look that isn't really what we're going for here. Um, I want to keep the chalk and the charcoal pretty separate from each other so they like are maintaining a clear kind of division of light and shadow without getting too kind of ambiguous or losing that that clarity so i'm looking for like what are the light shapes the bigger light shapes i see this really beautiful light shape um on her cheek so i'm gonna get that in there with my chalk again I can kind of come right up to the edge of the charcoal, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna actually meet the charcoal. Let me kind of hold this up a little so you can see a little bit better. You can kind of see that chalk going in there, those light masses. Um, and in the class, I chose, um, uh, purposely chose a few different uh, lighting scenarios with our muses. So we have um, uh, some that have like slightly more ambient light, some that have really strong light sources. We have models that have uh, darker complexions and lighter complexions so that we can play around with like the amounts of chalk and charcoal that it's appropriate to use depending on the um, just like the whole situation depending on what we're drawing um, because it really varies it's never going to be exactly the same drawing to drawing again i'm going to just put some light mass down on the forehead here oh awesome carrie i'm so happy to hear that yeah, this is, I'm like, drawing in front of people is kind of that thing where it's like, oh god, I forgot how to do everything that I've been studying for the last, like, 20 years of <laughs> drawing. So I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping it's translating. Also, baby brain not helping. Um... But this is like really my favorite thing to do in the whole world, so I'm happy to be sharing it with you all here now. Um, 
yeah, <laughs> yeah, talking. <laughs> Super great. I mean, I'm really chatty, so that helps. All my report cards talk too much, so I guess I can maintain maintain the monologue. But yeah, if you guys have any more questions, please throw them my way. Otherwise, I'm just kind of rambling here. Um, I tell you, I studied drawing. I've been studying drawing for a really long time. Oh, thanks, Sheila. Thank you. Um, I did a BFA at a school called Laguna College of Art and Design was like a million years ago. Um, and then I didn't quite get what I wanted out of that program. So um, when I moved back home to the Bay Area, I joined a drawing atelier. <clears throat> That's like a very, very rigid um, classical drawing program. Um, we did life drawing for, you know, 60 hours. Um, on figure the same figure drawing. Um, we did charcoal, we did graphite, we did oil painting, um, all based on like the 19th century atelier method. Um, very, very classical drawing method. So that was like the best experience. It was so awesome. And then um, I spent, I've just spent the last, well, then I taught at the atelier for years. Um, and then I've taught workshops all over the place, um, and now we're bringing this into the online arena, which is really fun. I love making, um, you know, this kind of like really specific classical art instruction, which can be hard for a lot of people to access. I love that Sketchy is bringing it um, to this platform because it makes it so much more accessible for people. Um, and it really just is, in my opinion, just such a great way to learn um, how to draw, such a practical way to learn how to draw. So I'm really happy to have the opportunity to share it with so many more people this way. Versus, you know, in a workshop setting where you can only reach, you know, four or five people at the same time. So anyway, now I'm going to um, be I'm just kind of cleaning things up with my stump really tiny little guy um, that's good for uh, details and I'm, I'm maintaining a separation between the charcoal edge of my stump and the chalk edge of my stump because again I don't really want those two to connect otherwise they're going to get that really weird it kind of goes into like a weird milky gray appearance and avoiding that happening you can see I'm very uh, nitpicky <laughs> about my tools, and you'll see that even more in the in the class. Very particular about things, but that's just years of atelier training. You can't you can't shake it once you got it. Hopefully, I'll bring a little bit of that to you guys. Yeah, I think, you know, let Jordan answer that one, Charlotte, but I believe that once these lives will go <clears throat> um, onto the sketchy YouTube channel to be available. Um, and be sure to check out the class itself, which has so much more information, like way more in depth. It's four lessons. Um, each lesson goes really in depth into a different part of this process. So. The first lesson focuses on blocking in the drawing, which we just did super quickly um, in this demo. The second lesson we focus on um, adding your shadow masses, which again, we did very quickly here. Um, the third lesson, we go into rendering in the lights. <clears throat> and then the fourth lesson, we kind of bring it all together and we go through the entire process in one drawing. Um, so you get to see from start to finish how this process actually works. So breaking it all down. I think I've made her chin really large. And then I'm just kind of 
just kind of fussing <clears throat> now. Oh yeah, please share your drawings. I'd love to see. There's a um, link to the um, reference image in the description of this uh, video below too. Um, sorry, uh, Charlotte Code. Can you uh, you mean like it? I'm not 100% sure what you mean. There's, uh, we shared the link to the class there in the chat. Hopefully that gives you all the info that you need. I'd love to see you there. You guys can also <coughs> find me um, on the sketchy <coughs> on the sketchy app. I'm sharing all my work. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, on Instagram at testimony art please feel free to um you know as you're taking the class post your work um on sketchy tag me um ask me for feedback i'm really happy to give um critiques um <clears throat> tell me whether you want like an atelier level critique <laughs> which can be a little harsh um, but you know, objective, or if you want a pat on the back, I can do either. I'm like, totally get it. Not everybody's trying to like do a perfect drawing every time. So I'm not trying to add, you know, unsolicited feedback where people are just kind of having fun. Um, but if you ever do want to like really hearty critique, I'm super happy to offer that as well. I've spent many years, uh, doing that as a career. So <laughs> Happy to offer that service. Um, I'm just at this point just kind of moving around, cleaning stuff up. Thanks, Charlotte. Appreciate it. Um, this is really a nice way to spend a Saturday morning once you're kind of up and up and doing it. I'm gonna use my brush again to kind of. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, you can kind of see how like the charcoal gets a little like mushy. I like to keep it really flat and clean. So I come back a lot with different tools to to flatten it. What I really want, I want the the viewer's eye to go to what's happening in the lights. You know, I want that to be where our focus stays. So I don't want um, whatever's happening in my, uh, in the shadows to be distracting distracting from that i want to maintain that focal point um i do a lot of uh i do sell drawings you know charcoal drawings um the market for them for charcoal figure drawings unfortunately is not that it's not as popular as like oil paintings um, they just don't have the same prestige, I think. Um, but I do, I do sell charcoal figure drawings here and there. I do a lot of commissions. So, you know, somebody might see, um, a drawing that I've done and like the way that I've done it. And then they'll come and say like, oh, can you draw, you know, my family or, um, whatever. I'm like, I'm working on a commission right now that's, um, based on a photo from the 40s, so it's a black and white photo, a beautiful photo of a um, family member working in like, he was an engineer working in a laboratory. Um, so stylistically, they like my figure drawing style, but they wanted, um, you know, this special image of their family member. So I do a lot more, a lot of commissions um, in charcoal. Um, and here and there we'll sell, we'll sell figure drawings. Um, nudes can be a little tough to sell. Not everybody wants that on their wall, <laughs> which I understand, but I still love to do them. Um, um, figure drawing, charcoal figure drawing is a little more, um, 
if, if you get really into it, there's a lot of um, like competitions you can enter um, and shows. Um, so that's kind of where more people get like a little bit more exposure for their drawing versus just um, selling them. There's not a lot of galleries that uh, that cater to this kind of work anymore, unfortunately. Um, but with a little hustle, you know, you can make a living. That's what I do. Um, I do a lot of watercolor commissions too. Okay. So I'm using my stump to kind of flatten out some of this chalk. And actually, it might be kind of fun for the last few minutes here, is getting into, I'm going to bring in a different brand of charcoal. This is um, Natrum, um, also vine charcoal. You can find them online or at you know, sometimes like around here, I do have, they do sell them in the art store. Um, these kind of are a little bit darker, I find, than the other fine charcoal, which are like Grimbacher or Windsor and Newton brand. Um, so if I really want to like punch up the background, I'll pull out one of these Neutrums, a really sharp one, and get in there. I'm never sure if it's Neutrum or Nitrum. I say the trend. They're made in Canada, a really beautiful product. I don't like it as much for like sketching, but I do like it for this kind of stuff, like getting a dark, nice dark value in there. You can see how that's really like kind of pumping up the volume, the drama. This is a very dramatic reference image. Oh, <laughs> escapist artist. Um, so I just, I mean, I love drawing and painting. These are my absolute favorite um, things to do. And I want, you know, my goal as an artist is to create art that makes, kind of transports people to a different place. Um, I am always kind of shooting for a sort of a serene, um, feeling in my drawings and paintings. Um, I love, some of my biggest influences are, um, illustrators, like golden era illustrators of the, uh, 1920s, um, kind of 1900s, early 1900s. Um, and I'm leaning more in that direction now with, um, Oh yeah, you're right, Angie, it is Neutrum, thank you. Um, I'm leaning a little bit more in that direction with my work kind of getting a little bit more illustrative now. Um, but I like to create artwork that kind of takes you away from the stress of life a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's what, I, what escape this artist means to me. And especially as I'm advancing my career um, working in the film and animation industry, um, getting a lot more into artwork that really is transportive, you know, science fiction type of art and uh, that kind of stuff, which is really, really different and really, really fun. So hopefully when I can really get back to work in earnest after baby gets a little bit older, hopefully you'll be seeing some more more illustrative and exciting artwork from me. Ah, uh, yeah, Charlotte, look up right above you, Angie. Angie nailed it. That uh, is Neutrum is the darker charcoal. I love this stuff. And the and the green one, like this, is uh, soft. That's really the only one that I usually use. Um, otherwise, I like using the. Um, I prefer the brands Grumbacher or Windsor and Newton for my vine charcoal. And I actually didn't even get into using medium charcoal on this drawing, just in the interest of time. I just stuck with soft. Oh, 
Oh, sure thing, Jordan. Oh yeah, another materials thing, once I finish a drawing and I spray it, I also use um, glassine, which is a type of paper. Um, it's kind of like a wax paper um, that you can use on uh, to cover your drawings to protect them. Um, I usually store my drawings, um, well obviously this is in a sketchbook, so that's nice. I just um, will use some painter's tape, really gentle tape, to um, tape a piece of glassine over the sprayed drawing, and then um, uh, if it wasn't in a sketchbook, I would lay it in a flat, flat portfolio for storage. Um, yeah, charcoal drawing is a little bit fussy as far as like storing it. The best thing you can do is frame your drawings under glass, absolute best, most protective. Um, but obviously you're not gonna frame every <laughs> drawing that you do. Um, so, failing that, yeah, flat storage, glassine, and, uh, spray fixative. And I, when I spray fixative, I usually do, like, like, four or five layers over the course of a few minutes. And that stuff is really nasty, like, you do not want to breathe that, so, you know, spray it, walk away, come back, spray it again, walk away. Try not to breathe any of that stuff, it's pretty gross. Alright, well we got a little something done here. Gonna, oh yeah, it's 10 o'clock, or what time is it? 1 o'clock Eastern. Just kind of picking out some more details. My eraser. So, yeah, I think we could kind of wrap it up here. Um, yeah, not a perfect drawing, but we got kind of got the idea there. I'm just looking at my screen <laughs> rather than looking down on it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty dramatic. Um, oh, thanks. My pleasure. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Really appreciate everybody coming out and having a look. Um, hope you'll all check out my class on Sketchy. I'm really proud of it. I think it's a really good introduction to this type of, of drawing. I really hope you enjoy it. Again, feel free to reach out to me um, on Sketchy app or on social media. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, and share more about this drawing method if you have questions. So, yeah, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Yeah, there's a link to the class. Um, thanks so much for sharing. All right, you're welcome. Thanks, everybody, for, for joining us, for tuning in. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Oh, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, and if you did draw along, be sure to share <laughs> so we can see. Um, or if you decide to do a little drawing afterwards, be sure to tag me. All right, take care, everybody.